Jones, you believe I heard a turkey gobble? I, I believe anything he wants. He heard a hen. He heard a hen yelp over there, didn't he? Yeah, and that dog barks at the hen, so that's why the <laughs> gobbler was a dog. Now listen, y'all never let me blow a call unless it's an owl call. So what was wrong with me make believing I heard a turkey gobble? Okay, you heard God. I'll tell you one thing. That's you got something new. What is it? Yeah, I see that. I got an, a hooter enhancer here so that anybody that picks it up to create their own back pressure. <laughs> you take it off. <laughs> Sounds like a duck call. You how many times have we heard that? Now we've got that eliminated. Puts the back pressure for you. Puts the back pressure. Oh, 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 oh. Now, see, did you hear it? There he went again. He, what are you laughing yeah, at? Yeah, I heard him, Dave. Yeah. yeah. All right, folks. <laughs> welcome to our new spring turkey video. Guys, this is our 10th year. We've not only got a new video out this year, but we've also got a classics video, which is looking back over the last 10 years. Wrong. Well, 10 years is flown by. I mean, it just seemed like we started doing them videos last year. I was supposed to when you're having fun, though, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Kind of reminds me of the hair. <laughs> that's it's just gone have. right on by. <laughs> My beard was blacker when we started. <laughs> well, I'll say this. We've been very fortunate to have a, uh, a job where we can a turkey hunt like we've been able to do and make videos. Even though the pressure's on to perform, uh, it's still been a great living. We feel very lucky. We owe the audience. Uh, a great thank you for supporting us over the years. Absolutely. And as we look back this year at our classic video, uh, look, we have, it's it's pretty unique because we're able to go back and pick out the things that were kind of exciting. And you know, it it takes about 12 or 15 hunts to make a video, and you got to pick that out about 30 hunts. So when you multiply that, that's 30 times 10. You're looking at 300 turkey hunts that we get to pick out the things that we like most about them, and some of them were really unique over 10 years ago. That's right. There's going to be some things in there you haven't seen either. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. It's some of the things going to be real unique to It you. always scares me when they talk about this outtake uh -huh. thing. Oh, well, it's not an outtake. It's a sure deal. <laughs> <laughs> I can think back of some things I wouldn't do proud of, David. Hey, listen, I we said have that all thing. screwed up big time. I can tell you that. I said this was a classic video, not an embarrassment video. <laughs> <laughs> Let's don't get too carried away here. But anyway, you know, there, when I look back on it, probably the the most precious hunt to me is the one with Jerry and Jeff. The, the last hunt that, that uh, those two boys were on with us, and especially Jeff, he, he passed away about five days after uh, his last hunt there. And then, you know, Jerry was, and Jerry were the first two people we ever hired when we uh, got Night in Hill. That's right. And not only was special because we was on the last hunt, but it was also special because Jerry and Jeff were there in the beginning of our uh, Night in Hill game call business. Right. Been there 25 years. And uh, both of them were excellent tenors, but I think more importantly, both of them were avid, avid, avid turkey hunters, weren't they? They loved turkey hunting. They could tell you, you asked either one of them any day of the year how many days was for Kentucky turkey season or Tennessee, and they could rattle it right off. And I could tell you exactly what they're going to say when you asked them how many they'd heard or seen it. Oh, day. yeah. Now, they would deceive you a little bit on how many turkeys they heard. They wouldn't lie, but they'd stretch yeah, the truth a little bit. Right. Jerry, as much as he called, he would have loved that little hen house, too. Let me he? tell you something. Jerry. He'd take a bunch of calls with him, but they didn't hear many of them. <laughs> <laughs> we can't sell calls talking about his way of hunting. Right, but i tell you what he'd do, he'd bring turkey in. Walter, what have you got there, buddy? Well, this is a hen house, as Chuck said, and uh, it has an adjustment here that allows you to move the sounding board up and down in the call to vary the pitch and the tone to the call. It's a very versatile call. So in other words, the bottom of it here has got something you can twist to put more pressure on. Right. Now that's unique. It changes the tones and the changes call the volume. volume. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. Got another brand new set of mouth calls too. That's the spitting I, image. That is one of the greatest names I think you've ever come up with for a mouth call. Uh, Pradco had that name uh, uh, for guess, fish bait. For, for fish, fish bait. bait. And uh, I told them, I said, that's a perfect name for a mouth call. And they finally come out with a, a series of spitting image mouth calls this year. It's, most of them is going to be a little two and three read. And I've tried some of them and I think they're awesome. I tried some of this turkey season. Chuck, they got that little. Prophylactic. Is that what's on the water? There's prophylactic and latex mix. And I tell you what, they sound great. They're that's easy good. to use. And uh, that, that's something I, I'm real proud of. We've done over the last year or two. We're making our calls a lot easier for the turkey hunter to use. And that's something we want to keep on doing. And It'll that, be good for Walker. That's exactly well, what I, I agree was going to say. That. That's the ones that I need. Most people are looking for something easy. Now, I don't care how good a turkey caller you are, you're always looking for something easier. Well, before we get too long-winded, what do you say that we sit back and let the audience enjoy either the new spring video 
or the 10 year classic, the anniversary. Of the deal. Turkey, so. That's exactly right. <laughs> Let's join Brad Yeoman, Bob Robb, and Walter Parrott for a spring gobbler hunt at Paco Plantation in Alabama. <laughs> it's mid-afternoon, and they're trying to get a good position on a distant gobbler. Still at 400, 500 yards. Let's drop off at the bottom here with him to see what our distance was. Let's when you're moving to a turkey that has answered hen calling, you'd better be on your toes and make a cautious approach. And be aware of the fact the gobbler could be moving like our hunters are. Which side of the creek you think, I don't know, buddy, but it's pretty thick right here. Yeah, it's too thick right here. Why don't we go on up this way and just see if it clears out in the bottom? It, well, there's a clear cut right there. It's, it's a little more open right there. Let's head down toward this creek here and see if we can cross it. Roll the dice, see what happens. Then. Go. Let's do it. This bird is in a creek bottom that has a narrow strip of hardwoods on one side and thick cover on the other. The decision is made to cross the creek and get on the side that has the open hardwoods. The odds are better that the gobbler will prefer to use the clean woods to come in. We're not messing up here, but it's too thick right there. It's a little open over here. A little more open. We need to get over here and try. Yep. Okay. Hope the, hope the 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 creek he's on. I couldn't. To call. I couldn't tell. He's just straight down to that bottom, a couple hundred yards out. Look, it's it's pretty open right here. Let's set up and try it right here. We can always get closer. Let's just, let's see if he'll come to us right okay. here. Okay, let's do it. Brad and Bob quickly set up side by side, while Walter drops back 50 yards. It's early in the season, which means there could be two or three gobblers together. Can't tell which side of the creek they're on. It's a lot thicker on that side, so they have a tendency to like this open area better. We're going to just try right here for a little bit. If we don't do any good, we can always move up. Right there, one o'clock. Not sure what side of the creek they're on, but they're coming. Get ready, buddy. They're coming down to the creek. It doesn't take long for the gobblers to start coming when our hunters get down in the bottoms with them. Just shift his gun over to the left like they're on our side of the creek. I think he sees them. There are two gobblers, and believe it or not, they approach down the thick side and don't hesitate to pitch across to our hunter's side. It's amazing how fast a turkey will come once you get a good position on him. And that's why the setup is the most important aspect of turkey calling.
Can you kill both of them? Yep. Kill them. I've never seen it. I'm great call of Walter. Yeah. They wanted to come back. It's they always supposed to, to be creek. lucky, you know? They came down to the creek, they turned around, went back up. They wanted down here so bad when you called that second time, they just jumped on over the creek, just came right on in, side by side. Man, what a view. Yeah. That's a nice one. A double. Look at the spurs. Mm-hmm. Afternoon turkey hunt. Good. That's a good way to finish the day. You know what's nice about Peco? What's nice about Peco? You can do anything you want in the morning. Of course, you probably want to go turkey hunting, or we can quail hunt, we can bass fish. It's up to you. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to talk to this man about deer hunting. You see the rubs we just passed? Oh, yeah. There's some and big deer on this place now. Scrapes. And scrapes. <laughs> we got lots to do. Well, let's get to it. Then. Let's go home. It's a 20 or 30 mile an hour wind. It's an hour after daylight. I ain't hurt a turkey. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get up here just before I break over this ridge and I'm gonna start calling loud because I know this turkey's here. Uh, I'm gonna get extremely loud and cut. And uh, this is a day that you can just really, really, really call loud. You know, this soft stuff is good, but it ain't. this ain't the day for soft stuff. They can't hear you. And I can't hear them either. What I'm using today is this ultimate cutter. This is a half moon cutter. I'm telling you what, this call is loud. I can cut real loud with it and I can calc real loud. That's what I'm gonna try to do today because them turkeys can hear that better than they can just a regular yep. Well, there you have it. When the conditions change, we as turkey hunters have to change too. Exactly where he's at. <laughs> that damn. He sounds like to me he's right over yonder, about 200 yards. Now, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get right up here on this little knob here. So that them turkeys not gonna come right up on top of it. Most time they'll come right around the knob. So I'm gonna sit right up here where I can just barely break over and see where he can't see me. On a windy day when a gobbler answers, don't move too far before you set up because he can't hear as well and it usually puts them in a slight state of panic which can make him come in real quick. Now that wind is blowing right straight to us. That turkey's further than I thought he was, so I can get just a little bit closer. Now I heard him a lot better then than I did down there. I got me a tree picked out right there. I'm gonna use this wind to my advantage today because I can get by a little more movement today than I normally could. The gobbler is cutting off the call, and the hens are also responding. Things look promising. 
I see some hens coming. Two hens coming right here in front of us. You can bet wherever those hens go, the old gobbler will follow, and they're coming straight to Harold. He has obviously lost sight of the hens. He's coming fast, displaying, and hoping for some attention. What a sight, a mature eastern gobbler in the open hardwoods. If this doesn't get your heart pounding, then nothing will. I've done something that's a little different from a normal turkey hunt. I used one call, used a mouth diaphragm, that ultimate series uh, diaphragm. And uh, most of the time I start a turkey off with one call and end up using another. This morning I used a loud call because it's windy. And you know, on a windy day, you've got to, you can get loud. You need to call real loud on a windy day. Uh, this turkey right here was a two year old turkey, just a good actor. Uh, you know, this time of year, early in the season, you can call hens to you. Don't let anybody kid you, a hen will come to you. And when I went to cutting and calling, calking, those hens come, I saw them uh, act like they jumped across the ditch and then here they come, they didn't waste any time, they come right to me. You know, if the woods are open, real open out here and you gotta really uh, hide or be still because the turkey can see you out here in these open woods. So what we did, we set as still as we could, especially while the old hens was coming by us, I just knew they were going to see us and go the other way. But when they got past us this way, I didn't care if they went to clucking and going this way because that old gobbler was going to follow them right wherever they went, that's where he's going. And uh, when he got in there close, I went to calling to him and he went to gobbling. And uh, he uh, presented himself to 30 yards, easy shot. Man, that was a great hunt. David is on Fort Campbell Military Base, a public hunt area that has some good eastern turkey hunting. I don't know, I've already heard a gobbler gobble right in here about 15 minutes ago. He's gobbling the crow calls, I don't think I came to gobble yet. But I know I'm close, I know he's within 150 yards, this old burn over timber right here. That was an owl. This old burn timber right here is a good place for him to strut. I'm going to ease right out here and see if I can locate him. It's early in the season, and this hunt is a good example of how a hunter needs to take his time in relocating a gobbler. the nature of a turkey hunter to keep moving toward where he thinks a gobbler is. Luckily for David, he was cautious and didn't overrun this gobbler like so many of us have done. In a time like this, pick a tree and get down fast. David moved back under the break of this hill to keep from being spotted as he set up.
the gobbler is close. I mean, real close. I still hear him strut. The way this bird is responding, he could have hens with him. But David is close enough, and the bird sounds to be interested. Hopefully, he'll top the hill for a look. I just heard him gobble. Gobble at a crow again. That drum is getting closer. They're heading up this way. This is a pretty interesting hunt this morning. I've heard turkeys gobbling in every direction. But this old barn over timber in here, we're at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. Lots and lots of turkeys, but I didn't do any good with them on the roost. But I knew there was a turkey close right here. He'd answer a crow call every so often. That's what happens a lot of times. You, these gobblers get hens with them. They'll shot gobble at a crow. And that was exactly how I found that turkey right there. I almost got too close to him. In fact, there's a, if he hadn't been down below that hill, I'd been in trouble. But at any rate, the crow call is one. He did good. That's a good turkey. He's a three-year-old gobbler better. Had a hen or two with him. You know, one neat thing about it this year, Bonetta has come out with this pistol grip deal. You can take that thing and hold it any kind of direction. That's the an answer to being steady on the knee when you're trying to call, because I like to use a box call, especially a little push-pull like this right here. That's my favorite, always has been. Most everybody that knows me knows that's my little trip right here. That's an excellent call. And I didn't give him a whole lot because he wasn't answering anything. But when I started calling yeah, softly to him, I heard him strut. He'd strut to every time I called to him and I knew he was listening to me. And believe it or not, he led the hens up here. Why, I don't know, but there he is, proofs in the pudding. Boy, this is a great hunt and I still hear a turkey's gobbling out there. I'm gonna see if I can't run Harold down and go find us another turkey. It's midday on this Tennessee hill, and the winds are howling. Chuck Jones and Chris Parrish are hosted by Steve Nelson and Jeff Winningham, who have obviously spotted the turkey our hunters thought they heard, despite the high winds. Sometimes we don't spend enough time in an area. We will leave a turkey before he has time to show up. Not every turkey gobbles to announce his arrival. These are the ones that run off when turkey hunters get up to move. Good bird, good bird. What about you? Right where we just come from. from where That's where turkey got Patience. Yeah. Hey, I've told you, man. Patience today. They're quiet. They're good, mature birds. Let it, let's get right here on this this edge. They're they going to cross that river yeah, down they're, there. They're, I, I believe you can. I believe you can make them cross the river. Normally they won't, but, you know. 
We'll give it a shot. Right, good luck, man. You're I'm gonna go up here and hide. I'm getting out of the way. Go, right. guys. See you. Get out of here. Get out of here. Jeff, don't get here, up right here. Well, Chuck and Chris have a second chance on these birds. They thought they had heard gobbling. A cautious approach by Steve and Jeff to peek into a field found the birds. Now the hunt is on. There are two gobblers together, so Chuck and Chris sit side by side so they can communicate and possibly double up. Chris starts things off with his Grand Slam cutter, and Chuck thinks one responded. All this calling, maybe one gobble. Then out of nowhere, the boys appear. Pretty as Chris Hen Yelps are, these gobblers are acting funny. They definitely aren't real interested in hen sounds. Yet the back gobbler, the one we call the looker, is trying to come, but the strutter leads him off. They don't watch, so. Well, this party is over, or is it? You're about to see why Harold Knight and David Hale are still two believers in the fighting purr concept that they pioneered years ago. When the back gobbler drops into a trot, Chuck grabs his slate and starts purring. Watch what a total change it makes.
gobblers commit to this kind of aggressive calling, it's good to keep it up and keep them coming. This hunt, thanks to the fighting purr, has gone from turkeys going away hard to coming in, displaying, and totally committed with two Benelli's trained on them. Walter, who's behind the camera, is wondering how close they have to get, but our hunters are trying to get it together for a double play. Have you ever seen complexion change on, change on turkey so fast? You know, it never ceases to amaze me, Chuck, that uh, especially early in the season or even late in the season, how well that fighting her works well, on those turkeys. You're right. We go to you, Walter, myself, Harold, and David. We always go south every year, hunt Mississippi, Alabama. Tennessee, last of March. Yeah, exactly. But yeah. every year, man, numerous scenarios that that call works. Yep. And it seems to work especially well when you got two and three year old turkeys and they're bunched up early right. in the season. There's a lot of stuff going on. Right. And there's so many different calls. You, I was using a slate today. Yeah. I've heard you on a mouth call, a mouth tube call, call, push pull call. You, well, know, you can do it with that's anything. That's a no brainer. Yeah. And that, we need to, you know, people need to utilize it more. I mean, it's something that's just a little old trick up the sleeve there that works consistently. And a good thing about it when turkeys come to it, you can be moving around. You can get away with some movement. Well, I'm, not, I'm not saying do that, but they are looking for movement. You're right. right. But you mentioned earlier, late season, it works well. When you do that, do you do that after you've hen called to a turkey? As or? a last resort. You know, if I've tried everything and it's not working, and a lot of times, you know, you're dealing with turkeys usually then that had a lot of pressure on them, and maybe some older turkeys that haven't been killed. And, uh, you know, a lot of times it'll, it'll pull them away from hens or just pull them in when they wouldn't come to anything else. The fighting purr. The fighting purr. You gonna carry two turkeys? You know I broke my thumb. Yeah, right? I tell you what, you make me do all the work. You got your <laughs> left hand good. <together>, <laughs> I'm gonna help call and see where these turkeys are, so we know which way to walk to. Okay. You listen. <laughs> Harold Knight and Charles Darby of Motorola are easing into calling position on a gobbling turkey. These boys are guests of Earl Bentz here in Tennessee. With the aid of this small creek, Harold and Charles get into close calling range of this gobbler. A small field lies between our hunters and the ridge the gobbler is on. Charles, you sit right yonder. See a tree? He ain't come down off the roost yet. 
I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hunker down right here okay. behind you on this bank. Now, watch right. when you get up there. Okay. Hopefully, Harold can coax the old bird down the ridge with his soft calls from the lonesome hen. See him strutting out or coming down the hill, just be real still. This is a big gobbler, and he has a long beard swinging. The sights of Charles's Benelli are trained dead on the base of his neck as he waits for a close shot. Most hunters believe a gobbler won't come down a hill to the call. Now here's proof that a wild turkey gobbler doesn't read the rule book on turkey calling. There are several other gobblers getting vocal up on the ridge. The big long beard wastes no time getting close to what he thinks is a live head. Charles is patiently waiting and enjoying every minute of the show the old gobbler is putting on. Harold, that y'all just shot? Yeah, that was just shot. Charles killed him a nice gobbler. Big old gobbler. What did you kill? <laughs> Listen, I ain't been doing nothing but missing them this morning. I've had, I've had birds all around me and I've shot over two of them and I'm fixing to go put this bow up, I believe, and go get my shotgun. <laughs> you gonna declare war on one, huh? I want to declare war and I'm gonna meet you up there at the end of the pine thicket. So uh, tell Charles congratulations. I'll see you up there in a minute. All right, Tim. Oh, God, we've got Ted up here tonight. Yeah. Good job. I like this. Here comes Earl. That bow. <laughs> oh, man. Hey. What a bird. Congratulations, yeah. buddy. Thank you. Enjoy this one. This well, is a good one. I tell you what, I heard them gobbling down your way, and I tell you, I love the bow hunt, but, uh, man, I put it right over two of them's back. <laughs> man, let me tell you something. You know, turkey hunting and deer hunting is, is, is sort of a solitary thing, and, and, and this radio has got more dang features on it than Quaker Oats. <laughs> it makes it fun. What all does that thing do, Charles? Oh, it's, that's, a, that's our newest radio, and it's got a lot of nice outdoor features on it. One of them's that Weather Channel. Oh. Well, you know, I was listening to the Weather Channel when I was up there in the thing, and uh, it's, it's threatening a storm here today, right. so... Uh, I tell you what, we've got time if you go put that bow up. 
You get that shot, you go kill another turkey. Listen, I'm ready to go. <laughs> well, let's, right. go. Let's, let's go. Let's go. Tim Harold and C.J. Davis are set up on a gobbler that started gobbling on his own in the middle of the morning. Tim, that gobbles that way. Yeah, he's behind us. We need to move. The opposite way, we got to get there the ground. The gobbler was in front of him, but while Tim and CJ were getting in position, the gobbler was also moving. Now he's behind them. You see that on the road? Yeah. Those turkeys, it's not that far away. He's gonna have to get pretty close with these bushes. Well, we got good cover. Yeah. He's gonna come right up the road. He's coming around that curve, just at the bottom of the hill, walking right up the road. I see him. It's the time of day when a turkey that answers this much will come if you let him. The carry light Jake and Hen decoys are now behind our hunters. That's good. The old gobbler will be looking past our hunters and should get close, which because of the brush is what CJ will need for a good, clean shot. You can hear other gobblers in the background. They also seem to be coming, but this big boss is in CJ's sights. As a matter of fact, the other bird's responses seem to urge this gobbler to come in quicker. Watch how he responds every time they gobble. There is nothing prettier than a mature long beard coming fully displayed with a morning sun bouncing off his magnificent feathers. A sight like this is what spring gobbler hunters live for. When the Big Tom gets to about 20 yards, he goes out of sight in a turn in the road. But in a matter of seconds, CJ knows he is in business when the old bird's shadow appears, announcing his final approach. Kill him. Kill him. Kill him. Wow. Good shot. Nice. Ooh, beautiful coming down that green oh, road. Boy. Picture perfect. Picture perfect. That's a big turkey. And he's missing a big lot of beard. I guess he shed that right when I <laughs> shot. <laughs> it just happened just like that. That's a big That's fat a pretty big turkey, turkey, turkey. Sure. Damn, those turkeys sound like me. They were right up there. They were. They were down the road just over this hill. And while we were circling them, they got ahead of us. We started calling, and they've turned around and come right back up this road because he wasn't the only one, you know. That's right. There were three or four more back behind him. They've been in that field across the hill, strutting and stuff, and they've just they've come right back around up this road. You know, it's easy to walk in this thick stuff. And he just pranced right back up here. I tell you what, you caught him so close, I couldn't even get on his head. I had to hold a little <laughs> bit lower with that brush in the way. Yeah, I noticed a bunch of that beard shed out when you pulled the trigger. I think it shed before I pulled the trigger. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right.
walking right up here where that turkey was gobbling this morning up on this point and there was another bird on over on the next ridge up here. Look here, they've been dusting right here. No. Right here, right here. They're using it. Let's try right here. It's a windy Kentucky afternoon for Tim Harold, Walter Parrott, and Anthony Brown. What was that? Right over there. So we're on that ridge. The far side over there. Let's get out of this open place. Let's go back here and get underneath this hill. Sorry. Right. On days like this, a call that has lots of volume, like the night and hail tube call, is excellent for finding a gobbler. Tim had heard turkeys gobbling in this area earlier in the day. Let's call one more time right here, Tim. We think about this direction over here. Yeah, I think he was down that way. He could be on his way, you know? Yeah, late afternoon. Let's, let's sit down right here and see if we can hear him. I get on this big tree right here. If we don't do any good, we'll ease on up here and get on the ridge with him. Okay. Afternoon turkey hunting can be very exciting once you strike a gobbler. The birds aren't nearly as active, so working areas where you heard gobblings in the mornings can up your odds of finding a gobbler. What is that right here? Well, this area is extremely open, so the aid of Kerry Light's Jake and Hen decoy can really help. Tim's favorite turkey gun to hunt with is Knight's TK-2000 muzzle-loading shotgun. These turkeys haven't had any hens with them on a windy day like this. If you hear one, most of the time he's going to come to you. It's late afternoon, and this gobbler gobbled down here. And rather than head toward him, we're gonna give him a chance to come to us first. And if he doesn't show up a little bit, we ease on around here and try to get a little closer to him. Tim knows in this open country, letting Walter do the calling from 40 yards behind will bring the gobbler closer. Walter has spotted him with his semi-compact Burris Binos. He's working down the ridge opposite our hunter. Come on, big boy. The excitement of an answering gobbler is one of the best feelings in the world. Wondering if he's coming, where he'll show up, and how soon he will come keeps a turkey hunter guessing. Now, as you can see, it's thick in front of Tim. It gives him lots of cover, but this old longbeard can also use it to cautiously come in. Our hunters see he is now closing the gap, so they won't call again. The 
Longbeard has a fix on the decoys. And believe me, what looks like a picture-perfect hunt is fixing to get exciting. The gobbler spots something he definitely doesn't like. Tim takes the shot, but shoots a small tree three feet from his gun. He's hit hard. Now the race is on. The race is on. Ah. By the way, Knight and Hale has a new track team. Tim's going to be the anchor man. He got him. Ah. Yeah, see the problem right here? About three feet from my gun barrel. That gun's been shooting dead on. That's three or four turkeys I've killed this year with it. That bear pattern, though. What I tell you coming in about the old rock pile, dust bowl, <laughs> gobbler, we walked by here. <laughs> Five minutes for you. You didn't say anything that. about this. Tim said something about the rock pile gobbler. No, I saw the dust bowls. We talked about him this morning. Yeah, we did. We did. Five minutes before he answered that tube call. I'm gonna tell you something, buddy. Do you use a tube call, yes, buddy? Yes, sir. I yeah. hadn't been, and of course I've seen it for years. Walter's as good as I've ever heard oh. on it, but there's nothing that sounds more realistic. No. Cutting one. How, how do you? A guy that wants to learn to use that thing. What does he do? Well. First of all, the yelp on it, you, you it basically runs like a mouth diaphragm, only it's external. You okay. use your lip instead of your tongue to control the air pressure. So you put your lip right here, and your top lip goes there and you seal it off, and you just huff and blow an air across it. The you more, lay your lip on yeah, the top? Yeah, the more lip pressure you put on it, the higher pitch you get. That's a high note, and then you drop your jaw to get the low note, which creates a yelp. Go check this gobbler in. Boy, that was pretty. Yes, sir. So you wouldn't take a gun if one had to gobble. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. It's the middle of the Kentucky spring season as David Hale moves toward a bird he heard gobbling. In the mid-morning hours, a turkey hunter can expect the hens to drift away from the gobblers, leaving them lonesome. When this happens, gobblers will travel their strutting routes gobbling to try to call other hens to them. David heard this bird several hundred yards off. He took a good route. Now he's gotten pretty close. Changing from a mouth call and then back to his favorite push-pull tears this gobbler up. There's lots of foliage, and that's good because a gobbler has to come looking for you.
what sounded like one turns into several gobblers. Well, David has his eyes on two big gobblers, and there are more sounding off right behind these two. Looks like the standoff is on. These birds have a good little open spot, and they're set on strutting there until what they believe is a real hen shows herself. Little do they know, they're in easy gun range of David who is milking this hunt for all it's worth. Three-year-old turkey. Boy, that dude would them two turkeys would not come to a call, but they gobbled everything. But when we got up there and got close in that thicket, got right on top of them. One quick tip here. When they won't come to you and they're gobbling like they are at everything, they were gobbling at crows, they were gobbling at rocks on the trucks bouncing, they was gobbling at goose flying over and they don't want to come to the call just shut up listen to them gobble get as close as you can remember when you get in close your circle becomes small and he can make a mistake and that's exactly what this turkey did once he got in there close we gave him a little bit of soft yip and they came looking for it just walking up there looking and got in there close where they knew where that hen was they wanted to strut 50 yards maneuvering around them in this thick air was a whole lot better than trying to get them to come 200 yards that's a great turkey hunt. <laughs> 